So, uh, Proverbs 17, 18. Proverbs 17, 18. One without sense enters an agreement and puts up security for his friend. So if you remember, uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at one that was very similar to this one. That was talking about not putting up, uh, not giving loans to people who are strangers. So this one is very, very similar to it. Uh, but it, uh, it, it more talks about it in, in a, I think, a little bit of a deeper concept. So first off, it brings up the idea of even with a close friend, it's still not a great idea. And, um, and then it says more generally that it, you were lacking sense to be in an agreement. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do you go about certain things? I'm not real sure. Like um, farming, for instance, sometimes you have to go into certain agreements to, you know, to run your farm. So where is the line? I don't know. I don't know. I think, the, I think the line is try to stay out of owing anybody anything. I think that's kind of the basic idea. So... Do the, do the what? Barter. Barter? Oh, right. Yeah, like changing this for that. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard nowadays, though, because everything is based off of off of debt. Everything. I mean, so you can't even, you can't, there's often times when you can't buy a house unless you have some sort of debt, unless you have all the cash, like the whole 150000 or whatever, and be like, here you go. You know, or if you want to, if you want to rent a car to drive from point A to point B, like you fly to a city, you want to rent a car, you cannot rent a car without some sort of credit, right? Or you haul, but <laughs> if you want to, I guess. Uh, and uh, so it's kind of one of those things where, it's, especially in the modern world, it's kind of hard to live debt free. You can do it, but it's crazy hard, very dirty. Especially right now with all the inflation that's going on, it's it's very difficult. So. <laughs> I think the idea here is just trying to stay out of the idea of owing people. Specifically, it seems like the Bible warns more against owing um, individuals more so than corporations, if you understand what I'm saying. Basically, um, hey, here's Joe Blow. I have know nothing about him. I'm going to give him some money. Yeah, that's not a great idea. Oh, here's my best friend. I'm going to loan him some money. That's going to blow up in your face. Versus... I'm going to the bank to take a loan out to buy a house. It seems like the, it, there's a little bit of a difference in what the Bible is talking about. If you pay attention to the context, it's more talking about, it, apparently, I, I could be wrong here, but it seems like it's more talking about uh, staying out of problems with different uh, individuals. So just because you know and like someone doesn't mean you should go into business with them. There's a lot of times that people think, oh, you know, I, I've known this guy for a couple of years. Let's go into business. It's like, yeah, that might not be a good idea. Um, I mean, even if you just like the person, that doesn't mean that's it's a good idea. Um, I remember there was this one girl that wanted to go into business with Gracie uh, and co-do a coffee shop. Oh, it would have. It would. It, there were some things that we didn't know at the time. Uh, they were not a good worker at all. Uh, they were very financially responsible. The whole thing would have blown up because the person was extremely lazy. And uh, Gracie was like, "No, I just don't really feel good about that." And so she didn't. And woo wee. <laughs> A couple months later, things started to come to the surface. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so, you know, little things like that where it's like, just because you know somebody or like someone doesn't mean you should go into business with them. Um, yeah. Not just with you, but sometimes with them too. And it ends a friendship. So uh, I, I, one of my friends, one of my friends, uh, they moved into this, they moved into this apartment with one of their friends. So my friend moved into an apartment with their friend, and it was fine at first, but slowly, <laughs> slowly the dripping faucet began, <laughs> and it just kind of went downhill from there. And uh, so, you know, just one of those things. Uh, just because you know and like someone doesn't mean you should go sign a loan. Uh, you shouldn't necessarily loan money to them, sign for an apartment. Uh, because the thing is, uh, if you sign on somebody's apartment uh, and they, they trash the place, I mean, it's you on the line. So... Um, it, you know, it, it's one of those things. You really got to, you really got to be be careful because it's very easy to get yourself in a in a bad place. Um, I my my rule of thumb is um, even if I was going to um, loan money to somebody, I I have like a high risk category that I just kind of laugh about it and then I would never do it. Uh, so in that category is any high schooler. If it's their first time living outside of mom and dad's house, no, <laughs> just no. I'm not even like you, you. You need to figure out your own crap. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I wash my hands of this <laughs> and nothing. Uh, and then there's other people that, you know, I, I would give money to and just not loan it. You see what I mean? And uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it depends. See, I say that I say that with with a little bit of a um, addendum to it, I guess. I wouldn't necessarily give it to every family member because there's 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 some who would take advantage of it and some who would it would cause a problem, and I don't believe in like funding somebody's irresponsibility. So there's just a lot of different things that I don't really want to get into, but you kind of see what I'm talking about, and so eh, it's one of those things. I know here at the church, pastor has a policy of not giving out cash assistance. It's just the policy. And uh, there's always people who come by with like everybody all the time with like these emergencies. And if, if the church was to only fund those emergencies, which aren't really emergencies, they could have been avoided in 99% of the cases. Oh, I'm driving from California and I ran out of gas. Probably should have thought of that before you left California. Like it is one of those things where you don't it, get in the Greyhound if you want to do that. Like you can buy a really cheap Greyhound ticket and just go across a couple state and then go wherever you want to go. And anyways... Um, so take great care with money situations. Um, it alienates people when you give them money. It forces a conflict. There's just so many different things, um, which we've kind of all covered, so I feel we can kind of just move on. Proverbs 17, 19, one who loves to offend loves strife. One who builds a high threshold invites injury. So there, there's a lot of people who I've known <laughs> over the course of my life that they just love to say snide and bitter comments. You know what I mean? They have to say that. They have to say the last word. They have to say that little, that little jab. Ah, ah. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's like, no, you're not, though. You say it all the time. Uh, we should just learn to mm, zip the lip. But uh, it's like that. There was that movie. Um, do you guys remember? Oh, man, a stupid movie, Master of Disguise or something. Um, do you guys remember that movie? Yeah, and he's all, you know, does the whole tur dresses up like a turtle to go to the turtle pub. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, st stupid as guy, I swear. But there's this one part in the movie that uh, has stuck with me ever since I saw it. Uh, and he goes, this is what you're doing. This is what I want you to do. <laughs> it's just, anyways, uh, and, uh, you know, cutting remarks, snarky tones. There's just some people who just love to do that. And um, there's something that I realized when I was reading this proverb this, this month. Um, is it says, one who loves to offend you know, those little kind of things, they love strife. It's not funny. It's not cute. It's not, oh, ha, ha that's just them. It, no, it's, it's annoying, and it gets under people's skin, and eventually it will, they'll blow up on you because you are constantly being a jerk. So, I mean, it's not, it's not funny or cute. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, doing things you know will offend just to prove a point is another thing. I used to do it uh, when I was younger. I feel like it's something that you should probably leave, leave behind when you're no longer a teenager. Like, you know what I mean? When you're a teenager, you do a lot of dumb stuff, and that's fine. But then, like, you're not a teenager anymore, so stop doing it. Uh, so, you know, trying to, like, be edgy. Like, oh, I'm, oh. Uh, here's a good example. Okay, so when I was a kid, I used to not wear hats in church because I knew that there were some people who didn't want people to wear hats in the church. I didn't know why. I didn't know, whatever. So then I started wearing a hat in church just to irritate them. <laughs> Because some things happened and I was a teenager and, you know, the rest is history. So then I stopped wearing uh, hats in church because, uh, because I realized that I was doing – so I, basically, so I, I did it so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't cause problems. I, I realized I was, I was at a point of my own personal growth when I realized that's stupid to just go around trying to irritate people. And uh, then I started wearing hats in church again. Not to irritate people, but because I knew that there were a lot of people who didn't grow up in church. And I wanted them to know that they were welcome here. Especially because um, years ago, this is uh, oh, probably eight or so years ago, this church used to have a lot of uh, older white conservatives. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. And they had strong opinions on everything. And uh, rules at the door. Um, if you've ever gone to a Baptist church... I don't know if you guys ever have. It, it kind of felt like that, where there's just rule upon rule. You have to know all these rules, or you're just kind of an outsider. Nothing against Baptist Church. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not going to heaven or anything. Um, but when they get to hell, I think they're going to be surprised. And, and I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Again, I'm totally joking. 
I'm totally joking, <laughs> right? Anyways, but seriously, uh, but seriously though, uh, it's one of those things where it just was a lot of rules, not really making a whole lot of sense, and um, and so I went through that phase of trying to offend just to prove a point, trying to be edgy or whatever. And it's like, grow up, you know, you're you're not you're not 14 anymore, like grow up. And uh, you can't act in such a way that causes strife and fighting and then expect to have peace. I've been surprised at the number of, of problems, uh, I should say, people who cause problems in the church. Um, not this church I'm talking about, in the church world. Like people who call themselves Christians and go around causing problems. And then they're surprised that they don't have peace in their family life, that their kids don't go to church, that they, um, you know, they don't have a place of, of authority or ministry in the church. And it's like, well, why don't you realize that it's because of how you're acting? Like, just change how you treat people, and a lot of the consequences will go away. And uh, so uh, encouraging your kids, uh, fighting is sometimes what, what, how people, how adults will do this. Um, they'll encourage their kids to fight by purposefully saying smart aleck things. Or maybe purposely saying something to one where the other one can hear. You know, kind of, kind of like sibling, trying to egg on sibling rivalries. You know what I mean? And uh, if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't do that, then or you probably don't know what I'm, talk I'm talking about. But it's one of those things where, um, you know, oh, how come my family doesn't get along? It's like, well, maybe it's because of how you're treating the mom. I mean, I see that a lot, where, where the husband is mistreating the wife. And the kids pick up on the attitude conflict, the tension in the house. And then they're surprised, like their kids don't listen to them or whatever. Maybe they're acting like ADHD or whatever. It's just one of those things. Um, so then, the, then that brings us to the second part of the verse. It says, one who builds a high threshold uh, invites injury. And so think of the entryway to your door, like to your house, like where the door shuts. Okay. Now think of, instead of them having standard sizes, like everything nowadays is modern, standardized, whatever. But imagine everybody built their own house and they all had different threshold heights. So now imagine that you built yours extra, extra high. So you would know that you were asking for somebody to trip over that, right? Like when your parents come to visit or something, they're going to trip over it because you built the threshold too high, right? That makes sense? Kind of? Okay, all right. So uh, that, that's a basic idea there. So let's kind of see how it applies. When you have too high of standards, um, you, you demand too much of, uh, of somebody. Like, for instance, your kids. They have to be perfect all the time. They have to do what they're supposed to do all the time. No mistakes, no, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and in order to come to our church, you have to do everything right. You have to talk right, act right, dress right. Conflict is unavoidable when you have those kinds of standards. It's just unavoidable. If you... If you run your family like that, if you run your church like that, where this is the threat, this is the threshold, this is the standard up here, it's just a matter of time before there's offense, before there's you know conflict, before there's you know issues that develop. People can't live like that. Your kids can't do it. Your wife can't do it. Your husband can't do it. Your, I mean, whoever whoever it is that you nag in your life, <laughs> if it's husband with the wife, then the, the, the husband. If it's the wife with the husband, then it's wife. You know, whatever. Whoever it is in your life that, that you spend a good deal of time nagging or looking down or whatever, when you, when you raise that threshold too high, it makes it where, you know, injury is unavoidable. Conflict is going to happen. You have to remember this, uh, especially if you're in any, any kind of a leadership position. So if you run a, run a business or whatever and you don't give grace to people, you're just asking for a problem to develop. There, there has to be a point when you can overlook things that aren't as big of a deal. Yeah, go ahead. Or you can look too highly above yourself. That's true. Yeah. You're the, you're the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And you know, people do that with a lot of things. Yeah. You take it on everybody else. Yeah. Now, people do that with a lot of things. Uh, pastors do that, you know. People aren't changing, or the church isn't growing, and you know I, I'm I'm responsible for for changing people's hearts, and I'm responsible for it. Or, go ahead. yeah, yeah. Even though they're good people, it's hard to Yeah, well, we right, and uh, parents do the same thing. Yeah, and and parents do the same thing too. You know, it's just having that, it's just not, not really a workable system. So if somebody's really sorry, we, we think something along the, along the lines of this. If, some, if somebody's really sorry, they'll, they're going to say this. You know what I mean? Like maybe somebody's hurt you in the past. Well, if they were really sorry, they'd do 
this, whatever this is for you. Maybe you're thinking that they're going to come to you in person and they're going to have this great apology. Maybe you think that they're going to come and grovel at your feet. Whatever. Uh, everybody has their own idea of the perfect, you know, apology. And they think if somebody's really sorry, they'll, they're going to do this. But I found that sometimes people are genuinely sorry, but they just don't know what to do. And they don't really know how to go about it. So sometimes they're just in a problem, in an area of life where they just, you know, they're, they kind of just feel stuck. Like I messed up. I feel stupid. Maybe I should just ignore it and eventually it'll go away. You know what I mean? Sometimes embarrassment. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. And so we start feeling stuck in a situation. That's when things get things get hard. And so what I what, why I, why I'm saying this about people not saying sorry to you in the way that you want is because of what that verse says. One who builds a high threshold invites injury. Sometimes it's better to just not have it your way. You know what I mean? Be willing to 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 forgive when just be, just because they didn't say it the right way doesn't mean that. You know what I mean? Anyways. Um, obviously, I'm not condoning you guys being stupid <laughs> about stuff, but you know, I'm assuming that you guys are full-grown adults who <laughs> can think for yourselves, and I don't have to spell things out, though. So, uh, so <clears throat> for those situations, forgive and give time. And then there's another thing that we do with this whole building a high threshold that I want to kind of just mention real briefly. We get this idea that I don't need others, right? So I'm an island; I can get it all figured out myself. I, I can just I, I don't I got it, I got it under control. Um, and here comes problems. <laughs> you know, whenever, oh, I got the, no, no, here comes the problems. Um, and, and there's a lot of applications here. So what is your threshold? For here, what's your, what's your pain threshold? What's your life threshold? What is your threshold in life? Like, is it, um, is it uh, how other people, um, how other people are treating you? Is that the threshold? The threshold is anything that you've built up in your life that you have too high of a standard on. So what is the threshold in your life? Well, what, is, what have you built up too high that you're demanding too much of others? Sometimes it's pride, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't admit it. <laughs> well... Oh, mm -hmm. I found, uh, Tim, <laughs> uh, yeah, I found, Tim, that if you, if you just look smart enough and dress up real fancy when you get drunk, it's different and it's better. <laughs> So, okay, so what is your threshold? The, the next idea, do you have a my way or the highway kind of an, an attitude? And then look at, look at the different situations in your life and ask, and ask yourself this, am I causing problems? Where am I causing, causing problems in my, in my house? Or in my, not my house, I mean my, my life. So, Proverbs 17, 24. Wisdom is the focus of the perceptive, but a fool's eyes roam to the ends of the earth. So, the idea here is perceptive people want to do what's wise, right? A perceptive is like discerning. Like, um, you know, you, you have a head on your shoulders. Um, these kind of people, they want to do what's right. So, they seek out how to go about doing something wise. Uh, they want to learn. They want to grow. But fools only want more. They're never satisfied. If I just had this, then I'd be happy. If I had that, then I'd be happy. You know, wh whatever it is. Uh, some of us hoard books. <clears throat> some of us want a car or a house. So, okay, well, you would hoard books too if you read some of the good books that I had, okay? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and they don't know what or why. They just know more. You know what I mean? They don't ask yourself, why, why do I need that? What am I going to do with it? What happens if I don't get it? Like, it's fine, right? No, that's never a thing. It's always, I need that. And once I get it, I'm going to be happy. And it doesn't really matter what that thing is. Um, they always look for what's missing in their life. Oh, if I had that, I'd be happy. These uh, People with uh, their head up in the clouds, I think is, is the term that they use. Uh, you, you know, their, their feet really aren't planted on, on the ground. They're always... Uh, think about the next thing. You hire them for a job, and they're just sitting there daydreaming about, man, if I had enough money, I'd do this. I was like, well, you know, you get money, though, by working, and you're here to work, so why don't you stop looking up at the sky? There's nothing out there. Do the job that I asked you to do. <laughs> Anyways, 
uh, uh, they're always looking for what's missing in life. They're just very discontent. But a wise person, they act wisely. So wisdom is the focus of the perceptive. They're, they're focused on wisdom. Whereas a fool's eyes roam to the ends of the earth, always looking for something else. Proverbs 18.1. I'm sorry, 17.26. It is certainly not good to find an innocent person or to beat a noble for his honesty. Now, this is a proverb that I have uh, personally lived out over the past couple of years. Uh, there's a lot of talk, especially social media and stuff, talking about white privilege, right? We've heard it all over the place. And uh, white privilege, I think, is a great example of this whole beat a noble for his honesty or certainly not good to find an, uh, find an innocent person. So the idea is basically... You're making people suffer who didn't necessarily do anything because they are white as a way of returning the balance of power. See what I mean? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. It's not good to find an innocent person. Well, injustice was done. I didn't say it wasn't done, but you can't correct the balance by overcorrecting on the other side. Like, all you're going to do is stir the pot and make more problems than there already are. Um, I mean, it's one of those things. So it's like, oh, cops, you know, they, 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 they always... They always, you know, take advantage of, of black people. This is when, something you hear all the time. Well, statistically, that statement is not true. Um, actually, more white people are killed by police in the U.S. than black people. However, let's assume that more black people, for the sake of this argument, let's say, let's say that more black people are. So, okay, does that mean that every single police officer is killing black people? No. But yet, once again, it's, it, it's not good to find an innocent person, you know. And so, there's people, poor people get this with, the rich, pe with rich people. Here we've got these rich people, they need to pay more taxes. And if they're doing good with their finances, tax them more. And it's like, well, no, hold on. <laughs> you don't need to you try and cripple somebody who's who's maybe on a different hill than you are just because you're jealous at the time. Like there comes a point in life when you have to be like, things are going well for them, and I, I guess I have to be okay with that. And uh so then the then the statement becomes, well. You know, they didn't do anything to stop this bad thing from happening. And I, I kind of understand the flow of the argument, but you don't really know everybody's whole story. And you can't hold grudges against people just because they meet a category. You know what I mean? Uh, I talked last week that I've met a lot of uh, divorce women who are starting to get an attitude against men in general. So they mistreat all men because they've had bad experiences with like three or four that were really bad experiences. Like maybe this one molested them, this one divorced them. And see what I mean? You go down the list and it's like, okay, yeah, you've had some bad experiences with men. But not all men are killed. And the same thing with the white, white privilege thing. I mean, yes, I understand that there are some people who have taken advantage of other races. I understand that. But not every single person has. So it's one of those things where you don't really know what somebody else is going, going through. Um, the way forward is by understanding, not by revenge. Christians, the culture, it, no, nobody's going to move forward by revenge. Like, you, you, just, you can't get, you know, oh, ah, ha, ha. Now I've had the last word, and so it's going to make everything better. No, no, then they have to have the last word, then you have to have the last word, and so on and so forth. So it's certainly not good to find an innocent person. People shouldn't suffer for not doing anything. But true Christians will always have to endure this. True Christians will always suffer, even if they didn't do anything wrong, because... God has called us to suffering. So, but it's always wrong to overcorrect and beat a noble person just because they have money, like in the case of taxes. So the last power we're looking at is Proverbs 18.1. One who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. He rebels against all sound wisdom. One who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. He rebels against all sound wisdom. So the thing that I'm thinking about um, largely in this one is isolating yourself maybe in your house. This is a great example. Um, another one is making decisions and not wanting to talk to anyone else because you already know that they'll call you on it. You know what I mean? I'm not just not going to tell anybody because I already know this is wrong. I already know what their opinion is on this. And I, you know, I'm just, it's my life. I'll do whatever I want. Uh, running away or moving far away for the purpose of doing what you want where people don't know what you're doing. And kids aren't the only ones who do this. Yeah, kids do it. I'm going to run away. I don't like how mom and dad are doing things. I'm going to run away. But adults do it too. We live in a place, we have a problem, and we're just like, I'm just going to go somewhere over the beach, and I'm never coming back. I mean, adults do the exact same thing. Um, I, 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 when I was working on this, um, one of my children, uh, who shall re remain nameless, but it's a girl, 
who has an older sister whose name ends with Ya. Uh, when I was writing this lesson, she was hiding uh, behind uh, some boxes, uh, eating candy. See, she wanted candy, so she stole it and then ate and went to the corner to eat it in isolation. I think that that is a perfect application of this verb. One who isolates herself <laughs> pursues selfish desires. <laughs> she rebels against all sound wisdom. She knew she was going to get caught. I mean, you had to. And went <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, I didn't lose my hearing. <laughs> Colitis doesn't mess with the ears. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, I want to do this so I'm not talking to my spouse or, or, you know, or another thing is maybe we do talk to the spouse, but then when they raise up a fuss, we say something like this, the buck stops here. Uh, uh, or, or, or we talk to somebody and then they, they give their, their, they say what they're, oh yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, <laughs> if they don't like it, tough. And it's like, well, you know, you're really just shooting yourself in the foot, you know, because you're straining the relationship first off. People went out of their way to, you know, they care about you. They had the, they cared about you enough to contribute to your life. But then also, uh, because you're getting yourself into a pickle, usually in the majority of cases. So sometimes we want to be alone because we just don't want to change. You know what I mean? Um, I, I see this happen a lot of times with guys who get divorced, um, specifically guys. They, they don't get with another person again because they're like, hey, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to act how I'm going to act, and women just aren't okay with that. It's like, well, I mean, in any relationship, there's, you know, a give and take aspect. You know what I mean? In every in every relationship. And, uh, you know, and especially with guys, because they do stuff like this. I'll look at porn because it's a victimless crime. I don't need a woman. I'll live my own way as a bachelor. And it's like, well, oh, there's so much wrong with that. <laughs> with that whole thing. But you actually see a lot of guys do it. And I don't see girls do it as much because I don't know why. I think girls just are more fond of relationships than guys are. I think that must be what it is. I, I don't know. You got me. But anyways, one who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. Have a lovely day.